it's what lies under the hood here in the way that the lighting is actually properly affecting the scene based off of our coordinates on this like plane, if you will. And today we're going to be taking a look at what is seemingly a rather significant improvement in the performance and capabilities of Google Gemini. This is dubbed DeepThink and was just released a few hours ago. Now, DeepThink here is initially referenced as being a variation of the model that actually won gold in the recent International Mathematical Olympiad, which you may have heard about if you keep up to date on some of the AI news and things of that sort. And they mention here that that specific gold winning model would take hours to reason about complex math problems, which is perhaps not so usable in day to day tasks. Therefore, this variation still was able to reach bronze level performance on that same benchmark based on internal evaluations. So DeepThink is, as listed right here, a powerful tool in creative problem solving. Beyond that, we do just see a little bit here about how this actually works, which is something listed as parallel thinking time and the extension of such, where how people tackle complex problems by taking time to explore different angles, weigh potential solutions, and refine a final answer. DeepThink pushes the frontier of thinking capabilities by using parallel thinking techniques. So Gemini can generate many ideas at once, consider them simultaneously, perhaps pick pieces of each to revise and combine together. Together and then come up with a seemingly better than previous result. And as they list here, the actual benchmarks do look rather impressive where it does seem to maybe unscientifically say be putting the Mac down on all of the other <laughs> models right here, even just the Gemini 2.5 Pro without the deep thing. So I am actually quite interested in being able to test this on some of my silly prompts that are probably not worthy of all of the math heavy mentions here in this article, but I <laughs> do just want to get a feel for it. And I was comforted by the fact that they do actually show this result here as a sample generation as well, where it creates a beautiful single HTML file of a voxel art scene of a pagoda, and they show the different variations. So here's Gemini 2.5 Flash, which I find to be aesthetically pleasing, 2.5 Pro, perhaps a bit too dark, and then Deep Thing here, which we can just see based off of this initial photo to be a significant, significant improvement over these two. Now, of course, a potential downside of a new state-of-the-art release like this is currently this is limited to ultra subscribers, which I don't know how much it currently costs. I know it's supposed to be $250, but I do believe they had some introductory offer that slashed that like around in half, but I'm not entirely sure if that expired or what the deal with that is. So with that, we do see that we have our deep think button right here, which I do have enabled. And truthfully, there is a specific test I like doing, which is of course the web-based operating system test. So this is limited and something that kind of frustrates me about this is they don't specifically show you how much you can use it before it runs out. That is something I will say that I like about OpenAI, where when you use the actual like agent or something like that, it tells you how many uses of that you have left. But aside from my nitpicking, let's just go ahead and try the generic test and then we'll perhaps do things that are a bit more intricate. Now, truthfully, this is the first time that I've gone ahead and used this deep think um, feature. So I'm not sure what to expect in terms of how long this will actually take or what sort of things we'll see right here. Okay, so it just says I'm on it. Responses with deep think can take a few minutes, so check back in a bit. All right, I suppose we can do that. Perhaps we'll just hop back over here and see if there's anything that I omitted from my brief overview or outline of this announcement article. Truthfully, not so much. It does seem like they are sharing the specific model that did actually achieve gold in the IMO with specific like uh, researchers and in the scientific community. But um, yeah, so I guess we'll just basically wait to see what our result is. And then following this, we'll perhaps do something a little more intricate that can really try to push the capabilities of this new release. Now, something that will probably be of some level of interest is that we can do the show thinking button right here. So that will just kind of show us. Now, obviously, this is very unlikely to be the full and verbose chain of thought or whatever the model is actually thinking. But we can just see right here that this seems to be almost like akin to a like a like a task list that you would see in Rue code or something like that, where it's going ahead and just outlining specific overview tasks. So after a few minutes, we do have our result right here. 
doesn't seem okay no it's a decently lengthy script i suppose could be said but it doesn't seem to be ridiculously long so just based off of my initial brief look at scrolling through this i'm not entirely sure how impressed i should prepare to be but regardless we'll just go ahead and take a peek at the result now before i click on this i do want to say this just feels like like taking a ferrari to like the grocery store oh wow okay no that's actually <laughs> that's that's quite good and of course initial things I notice here is just the background is quite pretty. Again, it does seem like we have this Pacific Northwest background aesthetic, which a lot of the models seem to do. Um, don't ask me about that. The clock is correct. We do actually have pretty icons here that are not like the generic things you would expect to see. This looks like a cute little deer, um, the browser icon and things like that. All right. Let's, <laughs> I know I get so, I just like this test. I don't know like what to say beyond that. Let's click our start bar. And it's nice to see there is not a Windows icon here. All right. So we have our text editor, a browser, about settings and log out. Okay. So hi, hi, hi. All right see if we can resize this window okay we can resize this window and rather eloquently I should say so that is actually a nice touch and not something that always does work very well or is implemented at all so that is good to see if I minimize this let's see if it actually stays down in the taskbar which it does and if I reopen it the text I entered does stay in memory if you will Let's go ahead and take a peek at the about. Okay, so we have a simple simulation here. This window is draggable, resizable. All right, not bad. Now, this browser, I would be interested in seeing if it actually does function to any extent. <laughs> All right, so it, it set the home page to be Bing. All right. It's like if it's like if Apple shipped a device and the homepage was like Microsoft.com, which is really quite unexpected. You, you would have expected this to probably have Google be the default page for this browser. Or maybe it figured this was like a slop test and it was like, let's send the traffic to Microsoft. We don't need this drivel. <laughs> All right. That's just something I, I did not expect to see. Uh, it does. It's draggable. It is resizable, so let's just go ahead and minimize that. And then the final test that I normally do with this is just open them all at the same time and then see if the one that I click on at any specific moment moves to the front of the window or in focus, which this seemingly does right here. I will say that the omittance, I don't know if that's a word, but the lack of calculator here is rather surprising and not something that I would have kind of expected to see. And then these are, of course, just placeholders. So Overall, a good result. The draggableness of the windows here, of course, is good to see. Again, the Bing.com thing was kind of unexpected, but funny. So, not bad. So I'm very interested in seeing how it performs with this prompt, as this is something that to date I've never really received a satisfactory result from. The task is to write a simple version of a 3D racing game. It should feature a first person view, an opponent car in which to race against, a map, and then some simple gameplay logic such as pausing and restarting. The graphical style is denoted as 3D low poly with emphasis on detail. Now, something I do find a little confusing here is that the initial thinking chain here is basically the model saying that it is not capable of creating the interactive front end elements like HTML, CSS, or WebGL based 3D rendering. <laughs> so from what it's left off here, it's essentially saying that it's going to shift its focus to clearly explaining these constraints and offering alternative, alternative achievable outputs. I would guess that it likely will go ahead and actually utilize some of these specific libraries here in the actual end result, but I do find it interesting that its first thought process was to jump to constraints on things that it is actually capable of doing. So, oh, okay. <laughs> and then good, good to see. So basically we can ignore here where it's saying I can't use any of these because it initially starts off with a response saying, here's your 3D racing game using the 3JS library. All right. <laughs> now I will say, this is my complete first look at this. I've not even looked at the result, but in all my test, in all my years of testing this, <laughs> I have not seen it actually refer to such um, geometric or like, yeah, like octagonal wheels, uh, some trees, 
some rocks, but the way that it's using these um, geometry style words to actually denote the style of the things it generated does seemingly pivot towards a math uh, focused or intellectual model. Okay, we have our, there's, <laughs> there's no code. Okay, so we'll use up another one of our deep think um, utilizations here to just say, hey, this all sounds pretty cool, but there's no actual code generated anywhere here. So if you could maybe go ahead and do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, it just said, I apologize. I mistakenly omitted the code in my previous response. That's quite all right. No worries. All right. If we just scroll through. Okay. Seemingly a relatively decent length. So let's just go ahead and take a look at our race game. All right, fingers crossed. Okay, oh, I saw the opponent. They, the steering wheel turns with the key. All right, I like it. Interesting. I've noticed, that, okay, I will say this is significantly better than any result that I have um, ever seen with this, just based on the fact that it actually works. Now, I do believe the opponent seemingly disappeared and perhaps did go off the map, but there does actually seem to be some boundary here in the corner. And just the way that the steering wheel actually does properly correspond with the WASD keys. Okay, so there is no collision or like mesh colliders, if you will, meaning that you can just kind of drive through all of the terrain and things like that. But this is actually... Okay, here's something interesting that... I would like you to pay specific mind to please in this analysis of this generated result. Look at the bottom of the car right here where my mouse is and as I move around we will see that it actually did generate some form of lighting. I don't know the specific terminology which one would use to refer to it but basically what I'm trying to say is the lighting actually is well done because the shadows and things like that actually change and reflect off of the car based off of the position in which we are on the map. That is a significantly more intricate, in-depth uh, generation than I have ever seen with this. Just seeing that light, like physics or whatever you want to call it, that is really actually quite impressive. And uh, to be honest with you, <laughs> this is actually kind of fun to play. I, I know it's, it's odd looking and things like that, but again that the way the light actually reflects so like you can see the the color here actually changes depending on what direction we're facing either towards or away from the sun this is really a significant significant improvement in anything i have seen in this specific test by a long shot and interesting now this is something that is consistently correctly done but basically the speed in reverse, the maximum speed is lower than the speed in forwards, which is reflective of a real life scenario. Again, the lighting reflections, that's really quite impressive. Oh, okay. So we've gone out of bounds here and that is okay. So if we go, we do see that there is a bounds of the map. Okay. Fortunately, we can just kind of drive back there. <laughs> I'm honestly, I'm enjoying playing with this and I probably shouldn't, but this is actually kind of fun. So let's go back in the map. All right, here's what we're going to do. So we can press P to pause. We have paused. And then let's restart the race because I want to try to get a view of the opponent because we did see... Oh, yep. <laughs> Where'd they go? So they just flew off the map. And I think they just disappeared. <laughs> I really... I want to see the opponent. Now, it was not my intention to try to do another game generation with this, but the driving one was so impressive that I am actually very interested now in seeing what it does for this. I have just asked it to do a 3D first-person shooter, it, and this prompt is somewhat recycled from the previous racing game, but essentially it's an FPS. There are opponents, a simple map in which to navigate around, opponents to battle, and the graphical style here is denoted as voxel style with emphasis on detail. The game should have a way to pause and restart. Now this is partially drawn from this right here, where they show the colorful voxels so truthfully i'm not really in tune with this art style or voxel or stuff of that sort but from what i see here this does look really good so if we can get an fps that utilizes some of these elements here i think that it does have the potential to be quite cool again while this is actually generating okay so i'm gonna play low poly racer so if anyone is interested in actually trying this game themselves, I am more than happy to put this on Steam for the low price of $9.99. So please register interest in the comments and then we can move from there. All right, so 
Again, it finished, but it omitted the actual code, which is, you know, a quirk. <laughs> and it starts out by saying, this is a complex request, but here's what I did do. All right, well, you didn't give me the code. All right, let's check our voxel style FPS. Click to start. We have our controls. Oh, okay. Well, there's the video because I've reached my limit for chats with DeepThink until August 1st, 10.08 p.m. Well, you know, I wouldn't have reached my limit if it did not omit the script from two of the generations. All right. Well, I guess that concatenates what my plans were here. So unfortunately, we were not able to get this voxel FPS prototype working as unfortunately the non deep think Gemini seems to be incapable of solving whatever issue is actually ongoing right here. So with that, unfortunately, this will come to an abrupt end due to the fact that we did get rate limited until around nine hours from now, which, um, you know, it is what it is, I guess. But truthfully, I am going to say um, to sum this up. If this is a glimpse of like perhaps uh, future capabilities of some of these models or things like that, which it very likely will be, I'm more impressed than I anticipated to be when beginning to film this video to the point where I actually wish I had not wasted a generation here on this web OS simulation because it's actual capabilities here. And you may look at this and be like, okay, well, it's just a stupid game, which I understand that, but it's what lies under the hood here in the way that the lighting is actually properly affecting the scene based off of our coordinates on this like plane, if you will. And the fact that they're like, it shows a somewhat like, I don't want to say like a world model understanding, but this does seemingly perform mathematical functions or whatever extremely well and to a better degree than what I have seen in this one prompt sample size, but even still, I am very, very excited to see what comes out in the near future, as this is obviously, I mean, everything we've seen that we have now started out as some like research preview or something that was kind of isolated to the more paid tiers or things of that sort. So the direction we see is very exciting, perhaps a little scary, but I am extremely impressed with the short experience that I had with this model. And truthfully, when the generations do actually return, so when the rate limit comes off, I do have more things I would like to do with this, but truthfully, they're for like um, my own procurement of funds. So <laughs> this will probably conclude my testing of this on video. Overall, I am quite impressed with Gemini DeepThink. And I do just quickly also want to note that the bronze metal grade line right here in this mathematic benchmark. So this is the model we actually have. So it would have been cut off right here. The one that goes all the way up in this specific benchmark is only for like academic researchers. And I believe you have to be invited to get the full gold medal winning model. So, um, yeah, that's, that's very neat. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments and, uh, Go watch my previous video because it flopped. Um, all right, so <laughs> thanks for watching.